What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I am back with another player comparison video, this time comparing two of the greatest scorers and two of the greatest players in NBA history, that being Kobe Bryant in his 2006 season and Steph Curry in his current 2021 season. And like you guys know, Steph recently has been an absolute tear, and his scoring streak while he's carrying this Warriors team has been extremely impressive. And because of that great streak, he's drawn many comparisons, one of those being to Kobe Bryant in 2006. Now looking at both these seasons, there's a lot of similarities in both these players. They had all-time great scoring years, they were carrying subpar rosters, and they were arguably the best player in the NBA that year. So with that being the case, I'm going to compare 06 Kobe to 2021 Curry. Now before I do that, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so, and if you could like this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Now first up, we're going to look at Kobe's 2006 season. This year Kobe, he was 27 years old, and he was coming off a very disappointing 2005 season where the Lakers missed the playoffs. And at this point, Kobe was not playing with one Shaquille O'Neal as he had departed two years earlier. And he was stuck with a very subpar roster that featured Lamar Odom, Smush Parker, Chris Mim, Kwame Brown, and Luke Walton. Definitely not an all-time great supporting cast. But despite that, Kobe, he would carry this Lakers team averaging 35.4 points per game, 5.3 boards, 4.5 assists, on 45, 34, and 85 splits. And that 35 points on the average was the highest in the NBA that year and the highest of Kobe's career. And from an overall eye test perspective, this version of Kobe was the perfect blend of younger Kobe, who was super athletic, as well as the older Kobe, who was learning how to win championships and a much smarter player. 06 Kobe, you could argue, is the peak of Kobe Bryant individually, and I would not argue against you if you believe that. Now, one thing I want to point out is how consistent Kobe was from month to month. Looking at his scoring in November, he averaged 33.5 points per game, December 32, January 43, February 31, March 34, and once again in April, 41.6. So he averaged 32 points or better in every single month, and he averaged 40 points per game for two different months. And he was doing this in the NBA that was much more defensive. This year, the NBA had an average pace of 90.5 as the fifth slowest ever in NBA history. Also, when looking at Kobe's scoring, he had 27 40-point games, 10 50-point games, and two 60-point games, including a five-game streak of 40-plus points. He had 55 points in the second half alone versus Toronto, and 40 points in the second half versus the LA Clippers. And he had seven games of 20-plus points in a quarter, and three games with 20-plus points in the fourth quarter or in overtime. And speaking of fourth quarter scoring, this year Kobe in the clutch and in the fourth quarter was absolutely insane. He averaged 9.5 points per game in the fourth quarter at his first in the NBA. And looking at total fourth quarter points, he had 715. That was also first in the NBA and first all time. Even looking at second half scoring, Kobe averaged 18.5 points per game. That was first in the NBA and had 1,479 second half points. Once again, first in the NBA and first all time. And if you want to narrow the scope even farther down to clutch time scoring, the last five minutes of the game within five points, Kobe this year averaged 4.2 points per game, the most in the NBA, and had 167 clutch time points, which was fourth in the NBA. So looking at all that, there was no doubt Kobe at this point was one of the most clutch players in the entire league, and he showed up more times than not in the big moments. Now, this Lakers team was far from a great team. They did win 45 games in the Tough Western Conference, the six most wins that year, but in the first round, they played the Phoenix Suns, a very dominant team led by Steve Nash. And in this series, Kobe would average 27.9 points per game, 6.3 boards, 5.1 assists on 49-40 and 77 splits. And LA would lose this series in seven games, getting blown out in game seven by 31 points. Now that right there was a pretty disappointing end to a spectacular year, but Kobe in that playoff series did have 50 points, including two clutch time shots that are iconic moments for Kobe's career. Now with all that being said, that was a great year from one Kobe Bryant. But next up, let's look at 2021 Steph Curry and how great he's been this year. So when looking at Steph Curry this year in 2021, he's averaging a career high 31.4 points per game and he's leading the NBA in scoring with insane shooting splits, shooting 49% from the field, 43% from three, and 92% from the line. He also added in 5.9 assists and 5.5 boards. And when talking about Steph Curry, what always stands out is how efficient he is. And right now he's on pace had the second highest true shooting percentage for a player to average over 30 points per game. The player in first place was Steph Curry in 2016. And if you want to dive a little bit deeper into Steph Curry's shooting ability, this year he's leading the NBA in three-pointers made 
by a wide margin, and he's not just a great three-point shooter, he's also a great shooter from everywhere on the court. Look at his field goal percentage by distance, he's shooting 57% from two, 65% at the rim, 56% from three to 10 feet, 53% from 10 to 16 feet, 47% from 16 feet to the three-point line, and the three-point line on, shooting 43.1%. So there really is no weakness in Steph Curry's offensive game at this point. He's been a three-time champion, a multiple-time MVP, and he has the experience to dominate at this point in his career, being 33 years old. Now, Steph so far this year has had six games with 10 plus three-pointers. The rest of the NBA this year has had five combined. So Steph Curry's shooting ability is far and away the best in the NBA and the best in NBA history. And as it stands right now, Steph has had six games with 40 plus points and 10 plus threes. That already is the most ever for a single year, and the season is not over yet. Now, the last thing I want to do is look at how good Steph has been in the clutch this year. He's averaging 4.5 points per game as his fourth in the NBA on 47.50 and 100 splits. And when it comes to fourth quarter scoring, he's averaging 7.2 points per game on once again ridiculous 52, 53, and 96 splits. And lastly, when it comes to second half scoring, Steph is averaging 15.9 points per game, the most in the NBA on 49, 44, and 92 splits. So much like Kobe this year, Steph has been the go-to guy in the clutch and arguably the most clutch player in the entire league. And also much like Kobe in 06, Steph's supporting cast this year has not been great. He's had Andrew Wiggins, who's been hit or miss, Kelly Oubre, who got off to a really slow start, James Wiseman, who had a real learning curve, and sadly, is out for the year. You have Jordan Poole, Eric Paschal, as well as Draymond Green. I mean, it's a decent roster, but definitely nothing that Steph is used to. But even with that being the case, Steph this year is carrying this Warriors team, and he has him fighting for a playoff berth. Now, for the most fun part of this video, let's compare both these players and see who's actually better at this point in their careers. So like I said before, Steph and Kobe at this point had some striking similarities in their careers. They were both three-time champions, they were both proven in the playoffs, and they both were elite and lethal scorers. And there was a major difference in eras between both these players. So in fairness to both these guys, I'll put the traditional as well as the per 100 stats on the screen. And per 100 stats do a pretty good job adjusting for era. And looking at the traditional stats, there's a very good argument for both these players. Kobe, of course, had a more prolific scoring year, but Steph, from an offensive perspective, had more of an impact on the game, in my opinion. His per 100 stats are nearly identical to Kobe, and his efficiency is a notch above. Now, me saying that is not a huge revelation. We all know Steph's one of the most efficient players of all time, and Kobe, in his own right, was very efficient. But the one thing, in my opinion, that Kobe has an edge on Steph is when it comes to fourth quarter scoring, second half scoring, and clutch time scoring. You can look at the numbers on our screen right now. Both these players were excellent in the clutch and excellent in the fourth quarters, as well as in the second halves. I mean, it's pretty remarkable how both these guys carry their teams nearly every single night if it was a close game. But I think Kobe in the clutch time moments in the fourth quarters pair better than Steph when you look at the overall clutch time scoring, fourth quarter scoring, and second half scoring. Now, one other thing that both these players were very close at and very competitive at is how valuable they were to their team. Now, I will start this out by saying, I think Kobe had the worst supporting cast in a tougher conference. Steph's Warriors team this year is far from great. I think it's slightly better than Kobe. I think Steph has more reliable options. Again, that's not saying much. I think comparing to the 06 Lakers, this year's Warriors team is a little bit better than the 06 Lakers team. And some pretty interesting stats I found when looking at 06 Kobe. With Kobe on the court, they had a 111.3 offensive rating. That was the third best in the NBA. With Kobe off the court, they had a 92.4 offensive rating, the third worst in NBA history. And on the flip side of that, Steph Curry was also extremely valuable with his Warriors team. They had a plus 2.2 net rating with Steph on the floor. It's a 49 win pace. But with him off the floor, they had a negative 9.2 net rating. That is an astounding 11 win pace. So Steph Curry this year is quite literally responsible for 75 to 80% of these Warriors wins. And with both Steph and Kobe off the court, their teams are absolutely abysmal. Now, the last thing I'll say in this video, when looking at both these players at the eye test, Kobe was the more prolific scorer. Steph wasn't far behind. Steph was the more efficient player. Kobe was farther behind. Both players are extremely valuable. Kobe had the worst supporting cast, but Steph, you could argue, was more valuable. But the one thing, in my opinion, that gives Kobe the slightest of slight edges over Steph Curry, is that this year Kobe was first team all defense. Steph is not known for his defense, and he's not expected to be a great defender for this Warriors team. Fair or not, Kobe was six foot six, and defensively could have more of an impact on that end than Steph could ever have. 
But beside the defensive gap, both these players are extremely, extremely close. And if you ask me for a final verdict, if I had to pick one of these players and who was better and who had the better year, I would go with 06 Kobe, narrowly beating out 2021 Steph. Now with that being said, much like 06 Kobe, I think 2021 Steph is the best version of Steph Curry as an individual basketball player. It may not be the greatest version of Steph, it's definitely not the most accomplished, but looking at him as a basketball player, this year Steph Curry is better than ever, very similar to 06 Kobe. So my final verdict on the case of 06 Kobe versus 2021 Steph, I think Kobe was the better overall player and he had the better overall year. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.